when I was 297 pounds and I was fat as hell trying to be a Navy SEAL, the scariest thing in the world to me, even to this day, was that that could have been the rest of my life. So you have to trust that the dots will somehow connect in your future. You have to trust in something, your gut, destiny, life, karma, whatever. Because believing that the dots will connect down the road will give you the confidence to follow your heart even when it leads you off the well-worn path. And that will make all the difference. It's a luxury to pursue what makes you happy. It's a moral obligation to pursue what you find meaningful. And that doesn't mean it's easy. It might require sacrifice. If you need to change your job too, let's say you have a family and, 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 and children and, and a mortgage, you have responsibilities. You've already picked up those responsibilities. You don't just get to walk away scot-free and say, well, I don't like my job, I quit. That's no strategy. But what you might have to do is you think, well, this job is killing my soul. All right, so what do I have to do about that? Well, I have to look for another job. Well, no one wants to hire me. It's like, okay, maybe you need to educate yourself more. Maybe you need to update your, your curriculum vitae, your resume. Maybe you need to overcome your fear of being interviewed. Maybe you need to sharpen your social skills. Like, you, you have to think about these things strategically. If you're going to switch careers, you have to do it like an intelligent, responsible person. That might take you a couple of years of, of, of effort to do properly. I've dealt with hundreds of people in my clinical and consulting practice, and we set a goal, we develop a vision, and work towards it, and it, it, things inevitably get better for people. So it's not a luxury, it's, it's difficult. It's a moral responsibility, and it isn't happiness. It's, it's not, the pursuit isn't for happiness. It's a moral responsibility mm. to pursue what is meaning. Absolutely. Yeah. Charles, I love what I do as a leader and a journalist at Axios. My dream would be to do what I do at 65, 75, yeah. let alone 85. How do you do that? How did you make that possible? Like, what is your regimen? Well, the first thing, as, uh, as one of my, another one beside Frederick Douglass and my heroes, Viktor Frankl, uh, put it, ever more people have the means to live, but more meaning for live for. The way you do it is have meaning in your life. And the way you have meaning in your life is you discover your gift, you, uh, you follow uh, Maslow, what you can be, you must be. And whatever your nature calls you to be, you dedicate yourself to that. So I've dedicated my, my, myself to that, to, to learning every day, trying to find new principles every day, searching for every, how to better apply the principles we, we are applying them. And every day, try to improve. So I wake up every morning. What time? I, I get up, um, use a little before six, say 5.45, get, try to get to the office by seven. And, and, and what keeps me going is, oh, I think I can contribute today. The most important thing to do first thing in the morning is get yourself in a powerful state. If you're in a great mood, you will produce great results. You will have a great day. The better your attitude, the better the results you produce. The better your attitude, the better you can handle, overcome, and thrive through challenges and difficulties that come your way. So get yourself in a great mood. Do whatever it takes to get that feeling first thing in the morning. Whatever works for you, meditation, reading, gratitude, music, exercise, these are all good options that get you in state. When your mind is positive and clear, you can handle just about anything, can't you? And when you can face challenges with a clear mind, they lose their power. They no longer halt your progress. They no longer have a strangle over your day or your life. You simply choose the best way to move forward and move on. Most people don't start their days like this. Most people aren't happy. Don't be most people. Be the minority. The minority who start their day with positive expectations. Look at yourself in the mirror and repeat to yourself, Today is going to be a great day. No matter what happens, today I will see the good. No matter what happens, I will do the right thing.
No matter what happens, I will give my all today. Today I will give my best, so tomorrow will be better. To lock me in bed is torture. People that can spend days and days and days in bed, I marvel at them. I look up under the sheets. What do you have in there to keep you in there that long? Say thank you for grace. Thank you for mercy. Thank you for understanding. Thank you for wisdom. Thank you for parents. Thank you for love. Thank you for kindness. Thank you for humility. Thank you for peace. Thank you for prosperity. Say thank you in advance for what's already yours. The most selfish thing you can do in this world is help someone else. Why is it selfish? Because the gratification, the goodness that comes to you, the good feeling from helping others, nothing's better than that. And I ask you, what do you want? Because the days you don't feel like getting up out to bed, the days you feel like quitting, giving up and giving in, Listen to me, the only thing that's going to get you up out that bed, the only thing that's going to make you strive past that obstacle, get past that brick wall, the only thing that's going to make you get up and do what you're supposed to do is what you see. When you wake up in the morning, look at your goals, your goals going to tell you what time to get up. Are you hearing me? Don't be afraid of missing out. Be afraid of being in the exact same place as you are now, one year from today five years from today, ten years from today, struggling to pay the bills, struggling for energy, struggling to find that passion in your life. Visualize what you are going to do today to get more out of your life. Do it every day. And every day, you will love the life you have created for yourself. You know, you know when you are guilty of wasting time and laying in bed and you're being lazy. You know it. Whether that was seven, seven o'clock in the morning or six o'clock in the morning, you know it. You have to start the cycle of waking up early by waking up early. Success is not convenient. You have to do what is required to accommodate success. Holding the line, maintaining the standard, giving no slack, none. That's the discipline. There are opportunities that are going to come your way. And there might be some other things going on. And you have to make a choice. You have to ask yourself the question, what do you want? Because if you don't know what you want, nothing else matters. How I'm about to use my time. Is it positive? Is it purposeful? Is it leading in the direction of where I'm going and the meaning of my life? Is it productive? And is it profitable? 